Hello, welcome. My name is Catherine, and today I'm going to share with you three of my Cindy Lauper albums. I became a fan with the debut album in 1983, and I bought it after the first single, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. And I played this album so much, I memorized the songs on it. And I loved seeing her on TV. She was on American Bandstand, the Johnny Carson Show, the Grammys, and the American Music Awards and her sense of humor always made me laugh and i loved her clothes too she was a fashion icon so before i show you the records i'm going to tell you a little background on cindy lopper based on some of the facts that i've read in this book this is her memoir it was published in 2012. So Cynthia Ann Stephanie Lopper was born June 22nd, 1953 in Brooklyn, New York. And she grew up in the Ozarm Park neighborhood of Queens. And as a child, she loved music. Her first albums were The Beatles and The Supremes. At age 12, she began writing songs and learning how to play a guitar from a book. And in her teens, she expressed herself with a variety of hair colors and eccentric clothing. And she was often teased by classmates by the way she dressed, but she didn't let that bother her. In 1978, Cindy Lauper was a lead singer for a band called Blue Angel. In 1980, Blue Angel released a self-titled record of original songs on Polydor Records, but this album sold poorly. After Blue Angel broke up, Cindy worked some different jobs to make money. She worked in retail stores. She worked at a, as a waitress at IHOP. And in the evenings and at night, she would sing in local clubs because she loved to sing. And people in the music business noted her four octave vocal range and believed she had potential. And in 1981, Cindy Lauper met David Wolf. He became her manager, and he had her sign a recording track with Portrait Records, which is a subsidy of Epic Records. <clears throat> so here is her first album, very familiar to most of us. It's She's So Unusual. This um, front album cover was photographed by Annie Leibovitz. And on the back is a painting of Coney Island. And this album was released October 14th of 1983, and it became a worldwide hit. And like I said, the first single was Girls Just Want to Have Fun. It reached number two on the US Billboard. The second single, Time After Time, it was her first number one song, and it's considered one of the best ballads of the 80s. And it was written by Cyndi Lauper and Rob Hyman, the founding member of the Hooters. The third single was She Bop. It reached number three. And the fourth was All Through the Night. The song reached number five on the Billboard Hot 100. And Cyndi Lauper became the first female artist to have four top five singles from one album. This album sold 6 million copies in the U.S. and over 16 million copies worldwide. She won a Grammy in 1985 for Best New Artist, and the Library of Congress selected She's So Unusual as being culturally and historically significant. And I just want to show you the inner sleeve. It has her handwriting and the song Time After Time. Her next album is True Colors. It was released September 16th, 1986. And this album was produced by Cindy as well as a guy named Lenny Betsy. I hope I said that right. So the song singles 
the True Colors, written by Billy Steinberg and Tom Kelly. This was her second number one song. The other single was Change of Heart. It reached number three. And a cover of What's Going On by Marvin Gaye reached number 12 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. This album sold 4 million copies in the U.S. and 7 mil million copies worldwide. And the al album received favorable reviews from music critics. So my favorite songs on this album are True Colors, I like Change of Heart, and I also like the cover song Ico Ico that was first recorded by the Dixie Cups in 1965. And there's a song Maybe He'll Know on here, which was a song from the Blue Angel album. They did a remake of it on this album, and Billy Joel is singing backup vocals on it. And then I have this CD, it's called At Last. This was given to me, and it's a collection of cover versions of jazz standards and contem contemporary songs. And there's a duet on here with uh, Tony Bennett. And this album received um, positive public and music reviews. It sold 276 copies in the US, and it's it's a nice album to listen to. It's easy listening, and like I said, it was given to me, and I just keep it. So I wrote a letter to Cindy Lauper's fan mail, and in the, in the letter I told her that She's So Unusual was my favorite album when I was in the seventh grade, and I told her how I played it so much and memorized the songs. And I also told her what my favorite performances that I've seen of her do. And one was when she performed Strawberry Fields Forever for John Lennon's 80th birthday celebration. And New Year's Eve 2020, I stayed up till midnight just so I could see Cindy Lauper perform a new song before the ball dropped. So I enclosed a self-addressed stamped envelope and asked if I could please have her autograph. And again, I keep my expectations low. I just want her to know that I love her music and I appreciate everything she's done. Well, three weeks later, I received a handle with care package, do not bend. And when I opened the package, I didn't find my note card. <laughs> She sent me this. So this is really amazing and really kind of her to send this to me. And I really appreciate it. And I have it hanging on my wall in my room. So thank you very much for watching. Um, Cindy Lauper is an artist I still like and, and she just makes me happy. She makes me laugh every time I watch her videos and see her perform. So thank you very much for watching, and please leave a comment about Cindy Lauper and any memories you have of her. Thank you.